Hi everyone. Welcome again to our journey to the cross as we follow some of the events that took place in the run-up to the first Easter. On Monday, we saw that Jesus cleansed the temple. On Tuesday, we found that he uh, taught in the temple courts and the people came to hear him, but he found himself in conflict with the Pharisees and the religious leaders. So what about Wednesday? Well, on Wednesday, we don't hear all that much about what happened with Jesus. There's not that much space given to Wednesday in the gospel accounts. He continues to teach in the temple courts. The crowds continue to come to hear him. But one of the things that seems to have happened on the Wednesday is a particular meeting of the Jewish leaders where they come together to conspire against Jesus. This is what it tells us in Matthew chapter 26. The chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar amongst the people. It's probably a smaller group of the Jewish leaders, but a high-ranking one. And they have a very clear objective. They want Jesus dead. It is a remarkable scene, a pretty chilling scene. Here they are putting themselves in the very uh, position that Jesus warned them of as he told the parable of the tenants. They are the ones who are about to kill the heir, kill the son of the landlord. But as well as having a clear objective, they have a big problem. And the problem is the crowd. Remember, Jerusalem is packed with pilgrims and the crowd seems to be very favourable towards Jesus at this point. And they can't risk an uprising in these packed streets. So they decide to postpone Jesus' arrest and to push it down the road a little whenever everything has quietened down. That's how it would have remained had something odd not happened. Judas turned up at their door and Judas offers to betray Jesus. We read of it in Luke chapter 22. Judas went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers how he might betray him, Jesus, to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he consented and sought an opportunity to betray him in the absence of a crowd. We find elsewhere that the uh, sum given to Judas was uh, 30 pieces of silver. It was a, a large sum of money, several thousand pounds in today's terms. And it's a chilling thing to read. Judas, after all, had been with Jesus for uh, three years. He had lived with him constantly. He had preached with him. He had uh, performed miracles, it would seem, uh, with him as well. It's quite a remarkable story that someone who was so close to Jesus could, as the Bible makes clear, not really know him at all. What was going on? Well, we could speculate about his motives. It's very difficult for us to, to really be sure about anything. But what seems to have happened, certainly, is that as Judas gets exposed to more of Jesus, unlike the other disciples who, as they learn more of Jesus, trust him more, Judas, as, they, as he learns more of Jesus, turns away from him more until the point where he is ready to betray him. The amazing thing is that all of these people think that they're in control. The religious leaders, Judas, he has his plans and thinks that he's going to achieve some desired outcome. But actually, as we read the Bible, we find that there is someone else in control altogether. The disciples, uh, the believers later on in Acts, pray about these events. They pray about all the conspiracies that went on and they say to God in prayer, they did what your power and will had decided beforehand would happen. They know that all of this is part of God's plan. It doesn't take away the responsibility of those who did these things, but God is at work. God is working to bring his son to the cross. He's that determined to save us. In these uncertain days in which we live, it is marvelously reassuring to know that we have a God who is in control. When things seem 
out of control around us, even when evil seems to triumph? Well, we just need to look at the pages of the Bible and realize that even in these things, God is at work. Why don't we pray to him just now? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you today that the Lord Jesus allowed himself to be uh, taken to the cross by those whose decisions were evil, by those whose actions were actions of betrayal. Thank you that through and in all of these things, wonderfully and mysteriously, you were in control. Lord, we pray that you will give us confidence in you today, that whatever we face or whatever we hear of, Help us to know that you are in charge. Help us to believe that you are wonderfully at work. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you this Wednesday. See him walking.